Good evening, everybody. You are listening to Bloody Discussions. On this show, we will be discussing serial killers, true crime horrors, the occult, and things that go bump in the night. So sit back and lock your doors as we present you with another horrifying tale. All right, everybody. This is episode one. You're listening to Bloody Discussions. I am your host, Brian Glenn, joined as always by River. Hello, River. You, you ready? I, I'm, I'm ready? always ready. You're I'm ready? ready. I'm always ready. You ready? Ready to get some spoopiness? I've got tea. I'm always ready. Tea ah. always makes me ready. <laughs> right. So this week we are talking about Nathaniel Barjona. And uh, I think you'll you'll agree with me, River. He's a wonderful man. Oh, wonderful! Like, wonderful you know, man. One of those people you'd you'd like to play Santa Claus them all. Except, uh, I won't make the following joke. I'll let the following joke make itself as the episode continues on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to know what Nathaniel would do as Santa Claus to the naughty kids. Uh, and, the, yeah. and the nice kids. It'll be, it'll be and, made, the, on the, on the, and the moderate kids. It'll be made pretty clear as the episode goes on, you know, with, with the traditions of Santa Claus being maybe a little bit reversed. Yeah, and one thing I can't get over with this dude is how much he looks like uh, professional wrestling manager Paul Bearer. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> uh, he, used to, he used to manage The Undertaker. He used to have The Urn. I know who that guy is. <laughs> there we go. Is but China still a thing? China died. Oh, God, no. <laughs> China died this year. Well, she that... died of a uh, drug overdose. Oh, God, that's... Okay, no, my, my wrestling repertoire knowledge now includes The Undertaker. <laughs> so... <laughs> don't worry, this isn't a wrestling podcast. Lord Thank knows God. I'm not doing that again. Thank God. All right. Uh, so, yeah, let's launch into one. Woo. Nathaniel Barajona was born David Paul Brown... And he was a convicted child molester, possible serial killer, and cannibal. Mm, that yeah, you know, you know, it's good when it's like, okay, he's definitely a child molester, but he may have also eaten them. Yeah, he may have. Well, he's a big man. He's a big oh, man. God, he's a big man, yeah. But like the really interesting thing about Nathaniel is that he started really young. Yeah, and like, like, like and not the typical serial killer fashion of I'm gonna start torturing animals. Yeah, he skipped that stage completely and he launched straight into it. And as you'll see now, uh, in late nineteen in late July nineteen sixty four, seven year old Bar Jonah lured a five year old neighbor into his basement, telling her that he got a Ouija board for his birthday. Um, that could predict the future. I haven't given your kids bikes. <laughs> no, well, I haven't yeah, I, like, here, here's a teddy bear sonar, here's a bike, or here's a baseball mitt, or whatever it is Americans give each other. I don't know, but here, here's a hearty handshake <laughs> and, a, and a porno man. What do you give a seven-year-old? I know, in 1964, probably a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is a birthday I could solidly get behind. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> But yeah, like fucking, he got a Ouija board for his seventh birthday, and his Jesus parents Christ. thought this is going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it, this will set our kid on the straight and narrow. <laughs> well, is it more straight and narrow than a nice? You know, you some kids have Monopoly. Yeah, yeah, like, like couldn't you, if you want to give a kid a board game, Monopoly, Cluedo, Battleship, I don't know, <laughs> Ouija other... boards to summon Satan, it's right up there, man. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. It's one of those top five board games to give your kids <laughs> the Ouija board would you like your, t- would you like your kid to learn about the, the, the ways of the market force or summon demons I mean it wasn't the worst thing about that day though no it really wasn't so once the girl was in his basement Bar Jonah attempted to strangle her but her screams attracted the attention of his mother who came to her rescue well congratulations at least one of the family members seemed to have it, her, their head screwed on I told you not to give him that Ouija board he'll be fine he'll be alright he, he'll <laughs> like it he tried to strangle the neighbour girl I'm glad I hated her <laughs> you mean that girl that he stares at really intensely yes her ah well um, she's a bitch <laughs> wow <laughs> it's harsh to say about a five year old but okay fuck it he's fine yeah but he didn't stop there, so he didn't really do a whole pile after that. So he had that one incident, which mm. his parents more than likely played off as just a blip, just him being crazy. You know, playful child. <laughs> playful child. But then he struck again in January 1970. So like, so at this age, he, he's what? He's, f- he's 13. 13, he's yeah. Th- he's 13. Age. So yeah, uh, he's striking he, again in his early teens. He managed to lure another boy, six years old this time, to a nearby hill, claiming he wanted to go sledding. Air quotes. 
standing. <laughs> air quotes. We're doing air quotes. We're doing right air now. quotes now. Vis- or verbal air quotes. <laughs> Once they arrived, however, Bao Jonah sexually assaulted the boy. Nice. A few years later, Bao Jonah attempted to lure two more boys who were riding their bicycle down a street to a nearby cemetery where he intended to murder them, but one of the boys grew suspicious and persuaded his friend not to go. How do you, how do you lure two children to a cemetery? Yeah, like, tell them you're going to visit Grandpa. Yeah, but, uh, I used to visit Grandpa all the time. My yeah, parents used to leave me overnight. It yeah, was but, cold in that cemetery. But, but I imagine it wasn't some random or like, hey, kid, you want to visit your granddad's grave? Like, <laughs> Hey, kid. Want to go and visit, visit, visit Grandad? You want to see dead people? My my Grandad's alive. Moving on, <laughs> my mistake. <laughs> Sorry, I completely confused you for a different uh, different boy. Looks just like you, except he's he's stupider. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. But yeah, and then his real kick started off in 1975. In late March, Bow Jonah impersonating a police officer. This will be a trend that this, we'll see this later will, in the show. This, this is something he's going to go back to. This is a well that he draws from a lot. <laughs> like, a whole lot. Like a lot, lot. He, uh, fuck, I really do not like this guy. <laughs> uh, he, abducted an eight year, uh, he abducted eight-year-old Richard O'Connor while he was on his way to school. He then proceeded to sexually assault and strangle him. A neighbor, looking out a window, observed the abduction and notified the authorities, who began searching for the boy. A patrol, patrol car later observed a car matching uh, that used in the abduction parked far away from others in a parking lot. And after calling for backup, ordered Bar Jonah out of the car. You know, sometimes the nosy neighbors are the unsung heroes of America. Yeah, sometimes they're reporting your garden for having for being too long. Other mm. times they're saving your child's life. Get your kids out of my lawn and keep that fat guy from abducting those children. <laughs> you must yeah. keep your children inside. Oh, but they're just playing. No, no, seriously, there's a really fat guy just <laughs> over there, and he's been he's been salivating. He's kidnapped three children. I only said it now. <laughs> I've Thank been you. watching him for a while. I thought he was a babysitter. Thank you, Mrs. Wellington. You, you've been weirdly helpful. <laughs> now, go back inside and die, you cold bitch. You've been weirdly helpful. No problem. Get off my lawn. I'm, I'm not on your lawn, Mrs. Wellington. <laughs> she's you're, gone. You're in she, my house. She's, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her. She's gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, the poor old bitch. O'Connor was found in the car, bloodied, having defecated and urinated on himself from the assault and nearing the point of death. Oh, poor kid. That wasn't me being sarcastic. I, I genuinely feel bad for the poor kid. Of course you would. So you got, you got, got smushed. You got smushed by a very large man. Very, very large man. Like, oh my sweet Jesus! But uh, he didn't stop there. No, oh, no, of course not. And again, Bar Jonah's really young when he's doing this. A few days before his graduation, Bar Jonah drove to nearby Hartford, Connecticut, impersonating a police officer. He abducted a nine-year-old girl. Jesus Christ, like, like, for God's sake, like, do you really need to imprison a police officer again? Like, just get a new routine. Doctors are also things, come on now. Whom he savagely assaulted in the car. The girl began vomiting and convulsing from the assault. He drove to a nearby sidewalk and threw the girl out of the car. A nearby witness saw the incident, got his license plate, leading to his arrest. This assault never got back to Bar Jonah's probation officer, and he was released from parole in May 1976 from his earlier abduction and sexual assault of an eight-year-old boy. When Bar Jonah's probationary period was over, he actually received a letter thanking him for his cooperation during this time. Well done, you were a very nice citizen after you sexually assaulted several children. Don't uh, worry. To be good... fair, he only got caught for one. Uh, to be f- uh, don't worry. For good behaviour, we won't tell your parole officer you've been a bit of a you've been a bit of a minx. See, this <laughs> actually uh, the the reason the more than likely the reason it didn't get back to his probation officer was back in the day. This is the reason why so many serial killers managed to come up back then. No department was talking to each other. Yeah. Because they all wanted to be the one that caught the guy. So if there was evidence stacking up in one police uh, police station, yeah, they wouldn't tell the other one, even though they might have something crucial to actually get to the root of the goddamn crime. Well, yeah, sir, we've got some information on that Bar Jonah guy. The guy's been sexually assaulting all those kids. Uh, well, where'd, you, where'd, you get it? It, where'd you get it from? <laughs> uh, I got it from the police district uh, four, four, four blocks over. Yeah, keep it from those bastards. <laughs> keep it from those bastards. We don't need their help. We're going to crack this case, goddammit. <laughs> sir, many children are... Are being sexually assaulted they're, and molested. They're, they're all being left alive, and that might be worse. They're probably scarring a lot of people. This might be a new batch of... All these sexual assaults might be creating a new batch of Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> we might very well be creating the next batch of serial killers by letting this guy down. We don't want help. We don't want any help. 
Oh, you chief... chief we chief just want pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> it's a police officer. We're police officers. Then I want police reports of Spider-Man. <laughs> I think he's Richard Ramirez. Getting jokes about fucking Simpsons in way early in this podcast series, it seems. Like, Jesus uh, Christ. Start, start as you mean to go on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so after getting this wonderful little letter on September 24th, 1977, Bar Jonah claiming to be an undercover FBI agent, so he's got promoted. Yeah, <laughs> he's got promoted in his, in that, his work. That, like, I, I'd like to think that while he's not molesting children, he's taking acting classes. Because he seems to be very adept at like <laughs> acting and pretending to be other Father, people. father, father. <laughs> what? What is it, son? It's like, I am the Phantom of the Opera. You're a cunt. He's That's like, what you are. He's not a kid at this point. This is 1977. <laughs> He was born in like the early sixties, late fifties. He would not. He would have been in his twenties by he, now. He is bang on twenty, just just over twenty years old like, when he's, he's doing this. He's, he's not that much younger than we are, but still, he, I know not to impersonate an FBI agent. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> I learned that the hard way though. <laughs> they are not caught. They are not. He's done. He's gone from the kid from We Need to Talk About Kevin to Travis Brickle. Like, <laughs> are you talking to me? You you're talking, talking to me? me? Little girls like you shouldn't talk. <laughs> so what was he doing as an FBI agent again? Well, he was convincing two boys to come to White City Cinema in Shrewberry, Massachusetts with him. I hear that's a really nice cinema. It is a lovely cinema. I hear they were playing, uh, what was that in 1977? Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he was taking them to see A New Hope. I don't think it was New Hope, I think it was The Empire Strikes Back. I don't know, George Lucas was probably involved in some way. <laughs> Just another life ruined by George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> so, after getting them to enter his vehicle, Bar Jonah then transported the boys to a secluded area where he handcuffed and then proceeded to strangle and flick cigarette ashes upon them. Jesus. Oh, it gets worse. After jumping repeatedly on the chest of one of the boys, Ooh. the 375 pound Bar Jonah Jesus believed. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, like, I always picture weight in the past as like currency. Where three, like, you know the way, say, like a thousand dollars in like 1940 is worth like 10,000 now, whatever. 375 pounds now, you'd be like. Five hundred pounds is his process. If he, was al- if he was alive nowadays, he'd be one of those guys driving around Walmart in one of those little <laughs> scooters, <laughs> or going to Disneyland but can't go any of the rides. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go on the ride. You just want to be near near the kids. That's irrelevant. <laughs> I, 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 I don't see the problem. Is <laughs> don't you want to be near kids, Goofy? I'm Goofy too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Goofy. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so after jumping on the boy, on the poor boy's chest, Barry Jonah believed he had killed him. He then drove off with the other still alive in his trunk. However, the boy regained consciousness and managed to find help. This is the one that he jumped on. Mm. Leading shortly thereafter to Barry Jonah's arrest. The other boy was found still alive in his trunk. And for this crime, he was convicted of attempted murder and received the maximum sentence of 18 to 20 years in prison. Jeez, the Americans got very fucking strict recently, haven't they? I think it, like, attempted murder in America now is like, what, like life? Well, I mean, it's, you go back to... You the got 19- the chair! <laughs> you go back to the 1970s, they were getting pretty pretty consistent reasons to increase the sentencing. Yeah, it, 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 it might be, like a, I don't know, an increase in child murders and... Just and like, murder in general. This is around the same time that Richard Chase was doing shit. Ah, uh, let's, be, let, let, let's be perfectly honest. What was the biggest problem right then? Reagan wasn't yet president. <laughs> let's be honest now. That's the worst thing that's been said in the show so far, and I just talked about a 375 ma- pound man jumping on a kid. Yeah. I'd say kudos to that child for surviving that. Well yeah. done. Whatever, I, whatever man, your father, he would, whatever he your would father, have crushed me. Oh god, oh god, yeah. Like whatever your father <laughs> fed you, would you? I hope you're feeding that to your children too. Again, it was 1970s. These were the kids inspired by things like the Goonies and shit like Goonies that. Goonies wasn't out until the 80s. Well, I was inspired by something. There was adventure. Wars. Kids were allowed to have adventure back then. Then. He then, was a hardy young man. If he was alive nowadays, all he might have been able to do is tweet the word help. And then, then you know, obviously, following Popeye's example, they were eating their spinach. Like, <laughs> and that's the whole, the, the whole, whole message of Popeye was how to survive a child killer. <laughs> well, if you see, like, Bluto is pretty big. Like, <laughs> you know, he looks a little bit like Nathaniel as well. <laughs> he does, you're right. The fictional character of Bluto from Popeye the Sailor, who was like the other lump of interest for you all the You know what, oil. come to think about it. Popeye's girlfriend looked awfully young. And she was always afraid of Bluto. I don't think she was particularly young. I just think she looked disgusting. 
<laughs> she's a real human being. What the hell would she look like? Well, the same with Popeye. Yeah, okay. Imagine getting fisted by that arm. Pluto was fine. You'd probably like it. And I wouldn't. <laughs> Pluto was fine. Like it's like Pluto was like a regular looking human being. Like Popeye and fucking Olive Oil were like monsters created by Chernobyl. <laughs> well, that was it was the seventies. They were probably also on steroids. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you want to talk about how they finally arrested Nathaniel and put him in prison? I would like to talk about the fact that he didn't... The well, first thing I'd like to mention is that he didn't get put in prison until a good, like, two decades after his first attempt. Yeah, so like, his his first attempt was when he was seven years old, right? Yeah, in, like, the early 60s, 64, like, early around it then. was Yeah, it was around 1964. That was his first attempt. 75. Oh, no, no, yeah, sorry. No, 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 64. No, it's 1964. Right, yeah. So 20 years later, the 20, now 27-year-old yeah. is finally arrested with, like, at least four kids, five kids that we know of yeah. under his belt. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh. <laughs> so while in prison, he was transferred to Bridgewater State Hospital. And on March 22nd, 1984, he changed his name to Nathaniel Barr Jonah. He gave uh, several reasons over the years for doing this. He told friends and relatives that he changed his name because he wanted to know what it was like to be discriminated and persecuted as a Jew. Well, he, was, he was definitely being persecuted as uh, that's what happens when you get arrested. Um, yeah, slight so difference. He, slight difference between hating on someone for being a Jew, which is which we do not <laughs> condone, no, and no, hating no. on someone for uh, being a child killer. I'd also like to mention how spooky it got in here right now because all the lights <laughs> have turned off and I got one solitary text on my phone, which is on the other side of the fucking room. Like, what it, happened? <laughs> I don't know. He paid your bills, did I also don't know if uh, the answer to that question. I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for Nathaniel Barjona's ghost to come in and be like, ooh, and then start stomping on my chest. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll kill me and all like that poor kid. I don't think you're a little too old for him, unfortunately. I'm never too old to get stomped on. Um. <laughs> yeah, so one reason he gave was to his friends that he wanted to know what it was like to be persecuted as a Jew. Uh, but during later interviews with Dr. Michael Stone for the television show Most Evil, which if you haven't seen it, I really think you should check out. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like a good show. You know the show um, Born to Kill? Yes. It's kind of like that, except it's a little more in-depth on the guys themselves. But yeah, definitely, definitely check that out. Now, during his interviews with, Ma with um, Michael Stone, he claimed he was Jewish and wanted his name to reflect that. Uh, later in the same year, however... Superior Court Judge Walter E. Steele ruled that Massachusetts had failed to prove that Bar Jonah was dangerous. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Failed no, to no. prove that Bar Jonah was. I'm going to say what are you that. Talking, what are you talking about? He's a lamb. He, he's <laughs> lovely. So oh, we well, well, a pet of a thing. I remember they write a musical about him adopting twelve Austrian children and start singing to the Austrian mountains. I'm about jumping him. on your chest, <laughs> just jumping on your chest. How do you solve a problem like Nathaniel? <laughs> <laughs> you maybe lock him away for more than a few years. Oh, like, 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 I don't even know. did he even do the eighteen to twenty years. No, like oh, for God's sake. No, I don't even know how long he's been in jail at this point. But I can honestly. To God tell you, it wasn't long enough. No, it really wasn't. <laughs> so he got released in 1991. So he served like just just shy. He got convicted ten years, like like because he got seven years. To, yeah, I was saying like just under ten just, years. Just yeah, just just shy. And just he, shy he was sentenced to twenty. So like not even half of his sentence he served. He served because he was he was he was a lamb. Jesus, look at him. What has he really done? <laughs> Molested some kids to try to kill one. Who cares? You know what he like, did. You know what he needed. He just needed someone to love. Oh, that was literally it. Like, just all it was. That's, he, that's what the that's what they were singing about in the song. Someone to love. Oh yeah, like, and, and maybe maybe this I blame the dad for giving him a Ouija board at the age of seven. Uh, I want to know. I want to do an episode on his dad. I, I want to dig up as much information on that on that guy. <laughs> what went through his head? I don't know. It's like I'm gonna get my five year old son a Ouija board. I imagine it's one of those things where you know when your elderly aunt goes and gets you the latest Nintendo game and it turns out to be something really crap because the guy in games is like, yeah, oh, yeah. Julie, he'll love this. Yeah, and she gets it for you now. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like. I got you this Mario game for the Nintendo and all that so I imagine the dad was the same was like is this Monopoly yeah sure excellent cool now go play with that little girl next door that you always stare at with your eyes wide open and your your heart between your ears <laughs> okay father and your hands wrapped tightly around your teddy bear's neck ah uh, <laughs> uh, poor Rumpy ah uh, god he was also a child oh I'm yes I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's glad he's an inanimate object uh, <laughs> So, uh, what happened then in August 1991? Man, 
So, uh, just going back to before he got released, during this time, Bar Jonah, so this is during the time that the, the judge said that he was not proven to be dangerous. Bar Jonah had been confiding in his psychiatrist that he had a deep fascination and curiosity with the taste of human flesh. I uh, don't we all have that from And he fun. had innumerous murderous fantasies, which is the first thing so far that I can actually agree with him on. <sighs> I, I, I also have a lot of murderous fantasies. Don't we I'm all? having one right now. I, I haven't done anything. You don't need to. Oh, okay, I see. You don't need um, to. You're just your mere, your mere existence. <laughs> well, people, uh, that was nice. T- it was nice <laughs> being on the show for once. Uh, I'll, I, I won't be here next week. Clear, don't touch me. <laughs> oh, what? You don't like that? Stop it. It's getting really weird. <laughs> it's too weird for the recording. Well, let's make it a little weirder then, shall we? So he was released on August 9th, 1991, just a month after being released. He was observe. He started observing a seven-year-old boy sitting alone in a car outside of a post office in Oxford, Massachusetts. It seems to be an easier time. I hope the I hope the window was cracked open. Oh, you know, a oh bottle just you of water wait. below the seat. Kind of just thing. you wait to see what the security levels they had for unattended children in public places in 1991. Oh God. Barajona, who had slimmed down to his credit, he went on uh, the Jenny Craig diet while he was in prison. Yeah, he he, he weighed a mere. 275 pounds yeah, now. That, that was a 100 pound loss. That, that's impressive. Yeah, he did fine. It was, like, just I, made I him a little harder to catch and started running. I know most people in jail get buff, but you know, he, he slimmed down. He didn't need to get buff. <laughs> <laughs> he needed to get heavier. Bulk was not what he needed. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, sweet Jesus, I hate this guy so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to keep this in any way professional because I just want to find his corpse and strangle it. Oh, that'd be kind of ironic, wouldn't it? <laughs> He died of order, like he died of erotics, like like it, it, not even erotic, just asphyxiation of <laughs> any sort. He'd probably find it ero- er- oh, yeah. erotic. Yeah, probably. So weighing two hundred and seventy-five pounds at the time of the incident, he entered the vehicle where the boy was sitting unattended, thrusted his mass atop his the boy's fragile chest. Some witnesses, along with the boy's mother, observed the event and ran to the boy's rescue, causing Bar Jonah to flee. An officer recognized Bar Jonah's description from uh, over fifteen years earlier and he was later arrested for the attack. At first, Bar Jonah claimed that he entered the car to get out of the rain. Yeah, yeah that's, that's normal. <laughs> but later admitted to attending to kill the boy. I really like the fact, he was like, were you sitting on this kid? It's like, no, it was raining. I wanted to get, so you decided <laughs> to get in the stranger's car. Right beside a post office, you decided, I'm gonna get in the strange car instead of going into the post with office. a kid. Could have gone to the post office if it was raining. Well, maybe there's a queue. You don't want to be in a queue. You don't want to be in a post office if there's a queue. You could still stand in there to get out of the rain. Like that's, that's a, like, that's a uh, terrible, no. terrible excuse. Like, He's terrible at his job. How many times? How many kids has he gone near so far? Oh, like a good like 10, 12 kids. And he be. has been seen for nearly all of them. And the yeah. only one he did without being seen was the one that got him arrested. Also, do you think, like, you know, he said he, he vanished. Like, like, how did he vanish? This 275-pound man, how did he vanish, like, into fat air? Like, I don't know, a lot of, like, it was the grunge era. It just no rem- one was paying attention to anything other than their feet. It just reminds me a lot of Dracula, where suddenly he, like, turns around and he's turned to mist, or, like, he vanishes into the darkness, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hissing as he goes. Why, why were you sitting in that car? Well, Officer Pocket Sand! <laughs> I wonder the ear of King of the Hill, wouldn't so, it? Yeah. Guess, now the juicy stuff. Let's let's just have a little guess. What happened to uh, Bar Jonah when he got arrested for sitting on the boy in the car? He didn't get arrested for sitting on the boy in the car. He got away. <laughs> no, no. Since, since, he was arrested. Oh, he was, yeah, he he was eventually arrested for it. Keep he, up, River. Oh, he was sentenced to, sentenced to pro- yes, probation. He was sentenced to probation. Fuck, fuck you, Montana. He, he just got out of jail. So, uh, so listeners to the podcast, um, the, what... Did he, after getting arrested and put on probation for the uh, sitting and crushing of a small boy in a the car in the The exact thing that got him arrested the first time. <laughs> what happened to him afterwards? Did he, A, become an upstanding citizen of society? Yes. B, get arrested fully and never harmed another person again? Or C, yes. rinse and repeat <laughs> his previous actions? Well, if anything... If, you've, if you guessed C, ding, 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 you've won today's prize of the fucking obvious. But, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things about Nathaniel that stand out. Was the fact that he likes to crush kids? That's one no, thing. It's surprisingly <laughs> normal when it comes to the world that he's living in. But Clearly. one thing that really stands out about him, like I said, is that he kept getting caught but getting away from it. I don't know how. I, I, I like if you get like 
For God's sake, nowadays you get caught stealing a pack of gum. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, cut your yeah. hand off. <laughs> You're going to jail for 15 years. What do you do? I stole a pack of Wrigley's. What do you do? I set on a child. <laughs> I'm getting out in six months. How I, long have you been here? Eight. I tried to crush a kid under my massive, my, my massive weight. Like, Jesus Christ. But one thing that Nathaniel does share with just about every other serial killer, escalation. Yeah. So he did start off straight away with trying to kill someone when he was very, very young. Seven years old. But he moved on from there to after trying to sit... For a while, he was just happy to sit on kids. <laughs> Maybe took babysitting to the really extreme. Like, was like, I was just babysitting, but I'm bum tish. Thank you, I'm here all week. You know? And the court, like, get out of your scamp. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he used that at some point. But yeah, for a while... He was just, he was looking, it was clearly a sexual thrill for a while to just sit on the kids and cause them pain. Mm. That seemed, like, he didn't seem to have a whole pile of interest in killing the kids after he turned about, we'll say, 17. Yeah, yeah. He just wanted to hurt them for sexual thrill. He was even before that, like, when he was in his, like, his, like, a t- like 13 years old, he only sexually assaulted those other kids and he actually killed them. Yeah. The only so one he, he actually tried actually, to kill was the kids. Was the, 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 the little seven-year-old girl. Five-year-old, the little yeah. five-year-old girl when he was seven. That's yeah, yeah. The, so he had, it's almost like he started off with an escalation period and then he had the traditional serial killer cool off period. And then he kind of, it was almost like he got over the urges for a little while, but then in 1996, the urges came screaming back. I don't think they, ever, they probably never went away, but then he got his perfect opportunity. That, that could be it as well. That could be it as well. And let's go into what he did in 1996. <laughs> On February 6th, 10-year-old Zach Ramsey departed from his apartment to go to school at 7.34 a.m., taking his usual school route through an alleyway near the 400th block of 4th Street N. North. Shut up. He was wearing blue a blue denim jacket with green sleeves. Oh, the 90s. <laughs> a blue football jersey with his name imprinted on the back in gold letters. Stonewashed jeans and high top sneakers. The sad thing is, I see kids dressed like that nowadays. I thought, yeah, because grunge is back. Apart from like, the music, the thing is, I thought I'd get a little bit more of a period of grace where the the fashion of my youth was not around anymore. Because people, let's be honest, the nineties were not a nice time for fashion. It was not. It was. It was ugly. <laughs> like, please <laughs> stop. <laughs> what are you doing? So, as little Zachary. Ran- his way to school and a family of three who lived in an apartment in an alleyway reported seeing Zach in that alleyway that morning and they also reported seeing an off-white four-door car nearly run him over. Must be a big alleyway. Alleyways were big back then. <laughs> Thank they've got small references. <laughs> yeah, same so alleyway couldn't fit two chihuahuas. One well, I tell you what, it probably houses a couple families now. Yeah, probably, Some yeah. lord policy. Woo! Hey! <laughs> And another witness reported seeing Zach standing in the alleyway and he appeared to be waiting for someone. Yet another witness who lived nearby uh, reported seeing Zach distressed with an obese male following him a few feet behind at about 7.45 a.m. Somewhere between the alleyway cuts, uh, somewhere where the alleyway cuts into 6th Street and comes out at 7th, Zachary disappeared. He has never been seen or heard from since. That's really spooky. It's like as you walk, like it's one of those things you walk in one and you never come back out into the side. It's spooky as hell. He entered into a <laughs> wormhole. A wormhole. <laughs> Speak, speaking of spooky, as we mentioned, Zachary Ramsey yeah, in the, this recording, the power in the area of Galway cut out because of yeah, the storm. <laughs> the moment we mentioned Zachary Ramsey, all of the lights in the studio went out. Ooh, Nathaniel's here. He, he's alive and well. I do have a horrible crushing feeling on my chest. But that might be asthma. Uh, <laughs> For me, it's just smoking. So I, I've, yeah, yeah. I've had this my whole life. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, so, there's nothing spookier than talking about a serial killer and suddenly the lights go off in the ha- in, in, in the recording studio and you're like, well, this is th- hey, this is sticky wicket. Fucking credit to us, though. First episode, we kept going like champs. <laughs> we only stopped because I fucked up the script. And that's it. And you wanted to go for a smoke because you had a problem. Because I got a problem. I got a serious <laughs> problem. Not as bad a problem as Nathaniel does for not getting fucking seen. <laughs> so a witness reported seeing Nathaniel Barajona standing beside a dumpster in the alleyway at 7.15. So just before Zachary left for school. He'd clearly been following this kid for a while to learn his routine. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Um, he was wearing a navy blue police-like jacket. Like Same were... story 20 years later. What the hell is it with this guy impersonating the police? Maybe like, he just it's... wanted to be a police officer no, and didn't didn't make the cut. Well, you know, to be honest, back then, in, back in the 70s, you wouldn't have gotten away with being a police officer in America being 375 pounds. Things, things are different <laughs> nowadays, though, you know, when you got yeah. that fucking police yeah, officer. Yeah, if, if he was just born a few years later, he could be a proud police officer today. That, that if he had less strangly feelings. Yeah, if he didn't want to kill a couple of kids as well, mm. but you know, well, mainly the weight, probably. <laughs> <laughs> mainly the weight problem. That's so that same witness who saw him wearing the little police-like jacket doing his best cosplay of a fucking re... Of a policeman. I really hate him. <laughs> <laughs> that same witness reported seeing Zach enter the alleyway later and that Barry Jonah was still standing beside the dumpster. The police investigator conducted years, years after Zachary went missing determined that Barry Jonah had access to his mother's off-white four-door 1978 Toyota Corolla the day that Zachary disappeared. Is this, is this like, Barry Jonah's mother? Because that's depressing. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's going to be Barry Jonah's mother. I uh, don't think Nathaniel would have friends yeah. close enough to him that he could borrow their car. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The way it's written, it sounds like he borrowed Zach's mother's car. <laughs> and you're like, it was one of those situations where he cozied up to the mother, because the mother could do better. You know, that does happen I don't know a what lot. The look like, Ziana, but I do Ziana Fairchild, who happened to go missing roughly around the same time as this, that was a case of a, an unknown at the time child molester had befriended the mother and then abducted the kid after learning her routine. So oh, yeah. it could actually be the same thing. Maybe Nathaniel, maybe he had a little silver tongue on him. No, yeah, maybe. Well, clearly not if his excuse for getting out of the. Uh, for crushing a child in a car was. It was raining. Maybe it was raining. Yeah, I don't give a shit with raining. Like, it's not an excuse. Maybe it was. Maybe just raining a small car. Jesus Christ, we're in the West. Like, excuse me there, I just, need to, I just need to... Oh, you don't want to move? That's fine. I won't crush you. I've done this before. Like, don't worry. Like, we're in the West of Ireland here, and it rains here fucking... It's raining now, and I don't go. It's like, oh, sorry, kids, I'm going to sit on top of you while it rains. Yeah, get out of the car. You're, you're not a crazy person. <laughs> At least in the sense yeah, that he was. At least in the sense of, I want to kill you. The biggest threat you were is to yourself. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus Christ. Oh, God. We're getting really in-depth about each other's personality right here and now. This is going to turn into a therapy session soon. How, how are you feeling today? <laughs> tired. <laughs> tired. So very tired. See, it was moreover determined that... Bar Jonah didn't work on February 6, 1996 either. Fucking a job. Everyone had a job. It was the 90s. There were jobs. Who hired him though? What I don't what, know. what are your skills? I'm great at crushing children. I'm You'll good. I'm good with here. my hands and my ass. <laughs> You'll be, I'm going to crush your children. You'd be perfect here at this elementary school. Uh. <laughs> hey, every janitor in the 90s was a child molester. Wow. Every janitor. I want that on record. <laughs> Especially uh, you. You know who I'm talking you about. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, he also wasn't working the days immediately preceding. Oh, God. I wonder what he was doing. I wonder. Yeah. So while searching Barry Jonah's apartment... Uh, this is again years after the disappearance detective found a list of boys names which included previous victims and a Zachary Ramsey followed by the words in big capital letters died Aww. furthermore dozens of newspaper clippings were found in Barry Jonah's apartment following the Zachary Ramsey case that's really sad like all the other kids kind of got away and he was he like he was obsessed with Zachary part of me kind of wonders did he mean to kill him like just just at first, based on this, did he mean to kill him? Because he became yeah. just obsessed. See, like, I, don't, I don't think he meant to kill him, because like, if that's true, then Zach would be the first kid he killed. Like, the rest of them kind of either got away, or like, just tortured See, the tortured interesting thing them. is the list of other victims' names. Like, yeah. did only, it only seems that Zachary's name was the only one that had died written beside it. Yeah, but the rest like, of them probably just had like, survived or whatever, you know. Written had a grand much. old time. Almost got caught for this one. Kitty fiddling. Yeah, <laughs> but as well as that, just another example of just how obsessed he became with Zachary was, was a former roommate of Barry Jonah, which must have been a treat. Oh yeah, I imagine. That must have been lovely. I bet he made wonderful stews and pl listened to nice, imagine, listened to Isaac Hayes on repeat. I imagine it's like being a neighbor to share. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how was your day, Zachary? Yeah, it was great. Uh, a bar, uh, <laughs> you mean Nathaniel, Zachary was dead by this point. <laughs> maybe, maybe he adopted him for a while. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh, yeah, the, how, was, how was your day, Nathaniel? Ah, oh, it was great. What did you do? Uh, nothing incriminating. That's don't go, don't go to my room. That's nice. Stay out of the garage. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go back to work. 
It's 11 o'clock at night. It's a night shift. You work in a day spa. Day spas are open at night. Goodbye, Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> a form, yeah, but the former roommate used to mention that Barry Jonah used to just mention Zachary all the time. He described finding clothes in his apartment which were similar to what Zachary was reportedly wearing the day he disappeared, in That's addition to bloody gloves and just constantly, without provocation, without it tying into anything, just bringing Zachary up in uh, conversation. That's no evidence. Everyone was wearing those ugly acid-washed jeans back then. Yeah, the you bloody know. gloves kind of lead to a different direction, though. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of but course. I particularly like the just bringing him up randomly in conversation. So how was your day, Nathan? Uh, how was your day, Nathaniel? I was fine, unlike Zachary <laughs> Ramsey, who went missing on February sixth, nineteen sixty-six. Nineteen ninety-six. Nineteen ninety-six. Yeah, it's just like so. It, oh, Nathaniel, uh, I'm having a, I'm having a, a kid. Oh, you mean my wife? Are, are, it's a little baby boy. Maybe you should call it Zachary Ramsey. <laughs> Why would I call him Zachary Ramsey? Because he went missing on February sixth, nineteen ninety-six. I just feel like yeah, it's one of those like. Everyone has their obsessions, you know. Some people are obsessed with TV shows, some people are obsessed with, like, movies, some people are obsessed with music. He just seems, like, obsessed with some... Ra- it's like me being obsessed with the neighbor boy that I've never met and <laughs> I should have no contact with, but I'm some... Ra- and, like, and then the neighbor boy goes missing. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> you know, it is... I can kind of see why the roommate mightn't have seen that as a particular red flag. When I was a little kid, um, a boy went missing in another county in Ireland. It turned, you might remember the case, it turned up that he'd been killed by an older friend of his accidentally who had put him in a chin lock. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, how sad. I mentioned that kid all the time because the manhunt was on TV looking for the kid's body. And this just, this just didn't happen in Ireland very often at the time. It's not because Brian's a sociopath. (laughs) Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not puppet that sits beside me that I do the voice of. <laughs> That'd be very impressive if you do the voice of me as well as yourself at the same time and we all talk <laughs> each other. I'd be very impressed. I'm a very skilled ventriloquist. <laughs> Unlike Zachary Ramsey, who went missing on February 6th, 1966. Uh, but like, I, I, no, I don't take anything you say as gospel. You're from fucking Ross Common. Like, it's like, p- children going missing there is perfectly reasonable. It's just them going to Dublin to have... Uh, actually, let them go to Dublin to have a better life. It's them going to fucking, like, anywhere. Claire. Oh, Claire. Oh, that's why I'm here. Monaghan, Claire, I don't know, Cavan of all bloody places. No, no, Cavan's like... worse than we are. No, it's not. It is. <laughs> they just don't molest kids as often in Cavan. <laughs> or have, or uh, do have, they? Or have relations with sheep. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> I come from a wonderful place. For any Americans listening to this, just picture deliverance, <laughs> except worse. Uh, picture the lands of Rohan, except not as picturesque. <laughs> and if George or Mountain Ro- Rohan. <laughs> he kind of did. They called it fucking Reach. Anyway. So, another interesting thing that the investigators found were notebooks with seemingly arbitrary characters which were believed to be coded writing. With the help of the FBI, after months of efforts, the writing was eventually decoded. In the notebooks, Bar Jonah described torturing and eating children. There are even macabre recipes involving children's body parts. Ah, oh, shit. Children's body parts. I've already <laughs> got this adult here. God damn it. I was, hoping to, I was hoping to make, you know, fucking human meat stroking off. <laughs> but all I've, got is, all I've got is adult meat. It says here I need child meat. God. I've, got, I've, been, oh. I've been fucking shaft with that, that butcher's behind the dumpster yeah, in that it's... alleyway between between the, the, the barbers I mean, and that creepy it would be It would be like making venison stew. It's not going to taste right if it's a buck. Yeah, or like, um, you know, b- book cow. is venison. <laughs> venison is a baby. No, it's not. Is it venison not? is The deer. Simpsons lied to me you're years thinking, ago. You're thinking of veal. Veal is venison, the one I'm venison thinking is, of. Venison is deer. It's, a, it's, uh, like, it's like trying to make veal stew when you use venison. No, venison they're not the same animals. <laughs> <laughs> veal is cow, venison is deer. It's like trying to make lamb chops with mutton. That's the better option there. Fine, that'll do. Jesus Christ. Moving on to something <laughs> that's really, really sad. The saddest part is that you didn't realise that veal did not in fact come from baby deers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's slightly more sad than this. I, I think the idea of sad baby deers being kept, like held in place in a small box is the saddest thing I can think of right now. It is, it is slightly more sad than this, I'll give you that. So, despite <laughs> objections from the boy's mother, a judge declared Zachary Ramsey legally dead in 2011. His body was 
never found. Yeah, well, that, that's normal enough anyway. That they they kind of say it's been it's been long enough. Like Matty yeah, McCann at this point is going to be played legally dead soon enough anyway. I think we're about five or six years away from that happening. I don't think like, we are. Is, is going to happen well, soon. Sh- sh- missing ages back, like seven, eight years ago. Like, we if you think about it, I don't think I, we were definitely far from being legal. No. <laughs> I probably only just started drinking. I, I, you know what? Well, yeah, for you, that's nothing. Is like I, I, I just started drinking at the ripe old age of twelve. <laughs> no, that he was smoking. He sips from his alcohol cup. That, that that was smoking. I started drinking when I was thirteen. <laughs> I gave it that extra year. That's totally better. <laughs> well, that was when the mind altering started. It was the drinking at thirteen, and then the I started drinking. The, the weed age. kicked in at fourteen. I started drinking. I was at a party the day before my 25th, uh, my, my... Your 25th? My 25th Are birthday. you a fucking time traveller? Shh, don't tell anybody. I, I was... Why didn't you save Zach? <laughs> I am Nathaniel. <laughs> but like, um, I, I was at a party the day before my 18th birthday, and the reason I said 25th is because my birthday is the 25th, and just oh, as... I'm it, very aware of when your birthday is now. Just as it ticked over to 12 o'clock, my friend was like, here, here's a Jaeger shot, and I got a little hammered, but that was fun, at the age of 18. Um, you haven't stopped since. Oh dear, sweet Jesus, no. <laughs> we were sober when we started this. Ah, <sighs> refreshing. <laughs> uh, so, going back to the investigation in the fucking wonderful treasure trove that is Bar Jonah's apartment. Oh dear God. Where detectives sprayed his, his garage with a phosphorus chemical. Oh God, the words Tita appeared, which led authorities to believe that Bar Jonah may have been responsible for the abduction of James Tita a Massachusetts boy who was kidnapped on August 23rd, 1973. Tita's body was discovered on August 25th, on 1973. <laughs> <laughs> in Ringe, New Hampshire, <laughs> off Route 119. And an autopsy revealed that the boy had been raped and strangled. So there goes my theory that Zachary is the first kill. Yeah, clearly. But yeah, like that, that's only if he, like... Because he spelled the name Tita wrong. He spelled it T-I-T-A, while well, it's actually T-E-T-A. Well, he doesn't strike so. me as... Well, again... And he was he, like he's, he, he's he wrote a, he wrote a coded language, yeah, but so he, he couldn't must. spell Tita. Well, I don't know. Maybe just, maybe just heard the name. Like some some names are hard. Like it, like so many people get my last name wrong. Burn. You know, it's, instead of with it, it's like B U R N instead of B Y R N E. You know, some people get that wrong. So maybe it's just that he only ever heard the kid's name be mentioned. Because maybe this Tita no, no, kid. I, like, I, Zachary, I do I do get you because uh, yeah because like maybe like the whole Tita thing. He only, like he's probably watching him like he did with Zachary. Yeah, I think it'd be I think it'd be highly coincidental though that he was watching this kid and then someone else got to him first, especially <laughs> back in '73 when he was just the just really just, just really chancing like what he was trying to do, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. randomly trying to grab kids. But it also it shows his obsession with his kills. He had Tita sprayed on his wall in this garage. Mm. He always mentioned Zachary. Like maybe on some level, he had a list of things too, like a list of kids' names, like no kids, kids' names, recipes, there's... and like so many, so many of these serial killers. Like they, they have people that they admit to killing, but then there's so many that they're like, oh, he may have been linked to that, but we have, we like he's never admitted to, it, and there's no like concrete evidence. So God knows, God knows if the, all the names in that list are also kids that he killed or attacked who have like, either gone missing or have never come forward. Yeah, it it will we'll never know, unfortunately. Yeah, it's one of those things. I like. I wish I was able to figure out those kind of things. Where it's like, did he actually do it? Because there's so many things that you'd never find out about these serial killers. Yeah, I always kind of want. I always kind of think like the best. The best example is uh, Ian Brady. Mm. Uh, I think the reason that some serial killers don't admit to the other crimes that they're linked to is because they want to make the people suffer. Yeah. They want to make the family suffer Lack just that a little bit more. Yeah, because it's not like you're going to get any of a worse sentence. Like, you're just like, yeah. it's like your, your, your it's own crimes like, are a 120 year sentence. Like, it's like, do you admit to do, doing the other ones? No, I want a shorter sentence. So I think I can scrape 180. Like, <laughs> speaking of prison sentences, mercifully. So I was going to say, speaking of 180, I, like, I don't think Betty White was going to come up in this conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> mercifully, in 1999. Barry Jonah was finally arrested. Initially, guess what he was initially I, known for? He's covering up my screen so I can't see it. So I, yeah, I guess what he was initially arrested I'm going to say something really stupid like not paying car insurance or He something was arrested like for impersonating a police officer. Oh, yeah, that's what you want to go after. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, you ever see the episode of the IT crowd where um, the, the guy wants to eat Moss, the cannibal? <laughs> yeah. And then the. And the police at the very end kick the door down. It's like, is this an illegal download of DVD? And he's going to try to cook a human being, and that's what they go for him for. You know what? That is ex- <laughs> that is exactly like this situation. 
The IT crowd with its finger on the pulse. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Eat your that, heart out, Black Mirror. A show that has been on in, like, what, five years? A <laughs> long time. God a long been. time. Jesus. Oh, my God. So they arrested him, and that's when they actually searched his home for the first time. Well, looking for other policemen uniforms. <laughs> Jesus, look, well, I, see, found, I found a fucking FBI uniform here too. What the fuck was he arrested by an Irishman? This isn't New York. The policemen in Manhattan, or like Massachusetts, they're all fucking Irish. No, that's all Manhattan. Policemen, all policemen Irish in America. Irish people don't live in America all, unless it's Boston all, or New York. All policemen in America are Irish. If Simpsons has told me anything, it's all policemen in America are from Ireland. You okay. Know, Homer will probably weigh about 375 <laughs> pounds too. Uh, probably more than that. Probably don't want him to be around me. <laughs> so much anymore <laughs> and he was always strangling birds yeah oh, I can't believe they got away with her <laughs> maybe, well, like, maybe Nathaniel was the inspiration like pop culture icon Nathaniel Bar Jonah <laughs> like I love I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they got him on as well I was like jeez look I found another fucking FBI uniform I mean I it's like, not it's not really uncommon they caught no. Al Capone for evading taxes oh yeah god like they caught other people for like the stupidest things and it's like oh yeah you didn't pay your taxes. Oh, I also murdered 17 people, but I, I like how you, you went for the taxes thing. Thank you. Like, that's why that's why any serial killers watch, listening to our show, pay your taxes. Then the, <laughs> then the revenue board can't always, catch you. You continue on your always on your make sure <laughs> Always make sure your taillights work. <laughs> and for the love of God, if you feel yourself having the urge to actually kill someone, you know, and, and, get and, help. Or, 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 better yet, if you can't afford to get help, at least pay your taxes. Because <laughs> then they can't get you from something stupid like that. Think of it this way. If you pay your taxes and you eventually get arrested, you might get a but nice cell. It's like Al Bundy getting caught for having a broken taillight. <laughs> or <laughs> like, let's, let's go backwards here. Who got arrested for having a broken taillight? <laughs> Was it the man from Married with Children? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> my dad loves that show, and I don't know why. I, don't, I didn't say Ted Bundy, but I know I said Al Bundy. No, 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 you said Al Bundy I, was I arrested for several murders. That's canon now. I never said he was arrested for several murders. I said it's like him getting arrested for having a broken tail light, okay? No, yeah. no, no, he's Ted Bundy. They got the wrong guy. They got the wrong Bundy. Oh, jeez, Peg, I've been arrested for murder. They were supposed to arrest Al and King Kong. <laughs> oh, Al, you've been arrested for murder again? Unfortunately, oh, it wasn't yours. Oh, jeez, Peg. Is that, oh, I'll miss you, Hal. Oh, I miss you every day, Peg, with every bullet. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, God. When they were searching his home, they found, among other things, many pictures of young children cut out of magazines, a bone that was identified as belonging to an unknown male. Hmm. So then Montana police charged Bar Jonah shockingly <laughs> with kidnap and sexual assault, I as would... well as kidnapping and sexually assaulting of three other boys. I really now want to play that. <laughs> noise <laughs> to say like congratulations police of Massachusetts you've actually done your job after three decades the troubles over three decades the trouble started and ended by the time this guy got caught for it took 35 years for them to catch what let's face it apart from the coded writing was a pretty fucking incompetent yeah, guy open and close case the IRA stopped bombing the North by the time this guy got caught for stuff he started before they started bombing the North. <laughs> like, for God's sake, people. <laughs> oh, thankfully, he, kind of, he was prosecuted for the abduction and molestation of three of the boys and convicted of healing. <laughs> Congratulations. During, the uh, during his trial, a 36-year-old Mary Patron recognised him as the man who abducted and assaulted her by dressing as a police officer oh, for God's 26 sake. years earlier oh, in for 1974. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> however, Get a new however, <laughs> due to the statute of limitations having expired, Bow Jonah could not be charged with this crime. Oh, I see. Instead, yeah. uh, investigators also suspected Bow Jonah in the disappearance of a 7-year-old Janice Pocket 10 months earlier, but Bar Jonah was never really tried for that one either. Oh well, he still got a sentence of 130 years. I imagine one <laughs> yeah, or two. Yeah, and you know what else? Like... You know what else? 130 year sentence maintained his innocence until his dying days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Like I definitely. Didn't it was do like it was raining. That's all it was. Like, it was just raining. I you know what you should be doing? Looking for Zachary Ramsey, who <laughs> died on February 6th, 1996. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you so, say? Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, Nathaniel. We never said he died. Who said he died? We said he went uh, missing. You did. No, no, we didn't. We said are, he went missing. Are you missing. sure? Yeah, a hundred percent. You're a police officer. You're pretty stupid. You couldn't even catch me. <laughs> you couldn't even catch me after I murdered Zachary Ramsey. Shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> like, it's like an animaniac skit. <laughs> Uh, but here, going back to the earlier thing we were talking about, about police districts not talking to each other, Montana authorities were unaware of Barajona's past troubles in Massachusetts, a fact that was cited by activists campaigning to force former sex offenders to register. In December 2004, the Montana Supreme Court turned down Barajona's appeals and upheld his 130-year sentence. So, congratulations, American justice system. You did yeah. your job. Clap, clap. I can't really complain much though because if this was in Ireland you get a slap on the wrist in about 20 years oh he would have been released by now <laughs> oh god yeah. are the Scissor Sisters going to be in jail for life or are they nope. getting released oh they're going to get out they're going to get, get out they also run the prison that they're in but we'll get to the Scissor Sisters <laughs> in a later episode that's a, trust me that's another Irish edition of the episode <laughs> later on yeah so Nathaniel Barajona was found unresponsive in his prison cell on the morning of April 13th 2008 he had been in poor health, shockingly. Shockingly, being a 235 pounds, shockingly. And his postmortem found significant levels of LDL in his arteries and a myocardial inf- infraction. Infraction? Infraction. 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 It's spelled wrong. Infraction. It's spelled infraction. <laughs> Interesting. Was determined as the cause of his death. I am very upset that he wasn't strangled in prison. I really wish that they himself. went... Hold himself, that would ironic. Something that was asphyxiative. I don't think it's super know, ironic. He, he would have been killed... But I guarantee that he was isolated from. Oh the yeah, limits. probably. You know, it would him dying of asphyxiation would have been so ironic. Alanis Morissette would have written a song about it, but actually it would have been something really <laughs> ironic instead of having a black fly. No, it, it would have been more ironic if an if an even fatter, <laughs> uglier man <laughs> sat on his chest. Uh, it's like it's great. It's like sitting on a bouncy castle. If anyone wants to know why I have the Alanis Morissette's ironic in my head, in the shopping center, in Air Square Shopping Center in Galway, uh, which I work in. They have uh, a radio pl- station playing. It must be a radio station run by the, st- uh, the shopping centre. It is. all they ever have is the same song again and again. I listen to Amy Winehouse's Back to Black like 20 times. I'm not complaining. I like that song. But I can also do it with the, without the bangles, like, you know, uh, Eternal Flame 20 times a day. Hey, you know? don't knock the bangles. And today, today they had uh, uh, Lance Morissette's Ironic. And the, as I joke with my coworker, the only thing ironic about this song is a woman who clearly doesn't understand the word ironic. You know? Oh, you work with Ed Byrne. <laughs> I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joan Burton too <laughs> before we finish up here I just want to talk about the allegations of cannibalism oh yeah because that like you know that's his least of his crimes is <laughs> cannibalism like bloody hell see Bar Jonah's earliest interest in the taste of human flesh can be traced to his childhood what the fuck is wrong with this kid <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with like, this was the peace, era of peace and love this was the 60s like yeah. it's also the era that Marilyn uh, Manson um, no Mar- Charles, Charles Manson. Manson Marilyn Manson was not around in the, in the early 60s <laughs> well, he was he just he was a kid well he wasn't <laughs> he's old but like oh jeez he is yeah but, like, <laughs> he's old like, and he looks like uh, shit now I, I wouldn't surprise me if like like, like, like you know instead of having the Beatles play it's, it's like um, you know I love you baby and all that shit is like I wanna eat your f- I want eat your flesh <laughs> to the tune of you know um, like eight days a week <laughs> eight, I want to eat your flesh eight days a week <laughs> and once again Nathaniel Barajona pop sensation <laughs> I'm pretty sure he, he inspired the character of Scary Spice uh, <laughs> but yeah so beginning at about the age of six he would pick at his scabs until his skin was festering he would then proceed to suck the blood from the wound. Teachers at Webster Elementary School called his mo- would call his mother numerous times to notify her that her son was uh, hab- that her son's habit was upsetting to teachers and students. You know that was back in the good old day when just having your hair dyed a certain color wasn't upsetting. And this is like <laughs> your kid is eating his scabs and they're kind of getting you, festering you, and gross. Your, your kid is sucking his own blood. And he keeps staring at the other children while he does it, <laughs> just intensely. Oh, it's just it's just Nathaniel. You... Oh wait, sorry, they're Jewish. Oh, it's just Nathaniel. You know what he's like. <laughs> he's got to be a doctor someday. <laughs> he also he he speaks like a seventy-five-year-old man who's been chain smoking since about the age of six. Oh, 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 oh yeah, my old Kentucky home. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> It'd be yeah, very funny when this, I'm an old man. This is. Interesting, because this is a habit, like, you could almost write this off as a weird thing that a kid does, because Lord knows we oh, all yeah. did weird oh, shit. I think a lot of kids pick their scabs. Yeah, 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 and, like, I sucked my blood a couple of times. Yeah, well, it's... I have sucked recently. Uh, <laughs> it's the only thing I've sucked recently. I'm a very lonely man. <laughs> but when he was incarcerated in Montana State Prison, many of the guard, uh, many of the guards observed him doing the same thing. One uh. guard reported that Bar Jonah had the scab in his mouth, and he appeared to be having sex with it. 
Oh god, how do you have sex with a scab in your mouth? Actually, you, no, don't answer that question. I don't, you don't I want don't to answer that? that? I don't know. I'll, I'll show you off air. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, god, like, <laughs> I don't even think the listeners will even hear that. That's that's a whole new level of like. Sorry, I know I know you tuned in here for disgustingness, but this is too far even for us. Yeah, that takes bloody discussions to a little too far. Oh, yeah, definitely. But yeah, while he was incarcerated at Bridgewater State Hospital, Bar Jonah confided in his psychiatrist about the numerous uh, and the numerous murderous and cannibalistic ideations that he had. One of his therapists noted that his sexual fantasies, bizarre in nature, outlined methods of torture and extended to the dissection and cannibalism of people. He again expressed a curiosity in the taste of human flesh. Thank you, Dr. Freud. Uh, you, know, you, you couldn't have, like, I don't know, told anybody, but it's just... Uh, Patient doctor confidentiality. Like, this is the fucking 70s. What's a doctor confidentiality? I'm sure the doctor was standing around in the ward smoking, like, like Hey, Jay, that Barjona guy likes to eat flesh. Hey, well, <laughs> what was that? What was that you said? So you you want to eat a person? Hey, hey, Mike. Mike, listen, get a load of this. <laughs> it seems that he is fascinated with dissection and cannibalism. Thank you, Dr. Freud. Will Thank tell you, no- Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> not Dr. No, Dr. Freud. Come on now. Everyone knows Dr. Freud. No, no, not very many people know Dr. Strangelove. Like, okay. Well, he, he learned to love the bomb. He did love the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, so while Barjona was known to be a voracious eater who weighed in excess of 300 pounds... Whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me so many weighs 275 pounds is a voracious eater? Shock I and thought, oh, I thought he was an athletic swimmer in the, fel- in, in the field of Michael Phelps. See, here's the confusing bit. He ate a lot. Like, he'd be known to eat a lot because he was a big boy. He was but also financial, a But financial records indicated... That he hadn't made any significant grocery store purchases for nearly a month after oh. Zachary Ramsey's disappearance. Oh my god, that's creepy. However, it is important to note that he could have paid for any groceries using cash, or maybe he was just well stocked on food and meat. Oh, I know, but the coincidence of a guy who's allegedly a cannibal not buying any food like a month after oh, a kid goes missing, and you, his favorite things to eat were like burgers and meat pies. Oh, and things. you will. This is this is the Mrs. Lovett esque crap. Like you, you know. will love this bit. So after Zachary Ramsey's disappearance, Barajona also began to hold cookouts in which he was reported to serve burgers, spaghetti, chili, meat pies, casseroles, and the like to his guests. Do you think that he sang it as he did? Cookouts in which he was reported to serve burgers, spaghetti, chili, meat pies, casseroles, and the like to his guests. Do you think that he sang it as he did? You know, it's like, God, that's good. You know? <laughs> Just a little, what, it's a priest. I have a little priest. I have a little <laughs> Zachary Ramsey. <laughs> Here, I have this. It's, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm not smart enough to think of a joke right now. Here. <laughs> Just put it in your mouth. And eat it. And I won't eat your children. You won't what? <laughs> I mean. I won't beat uh, your children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfectly acceptable in the 70s. It's the but, 90s. It's perfectly acceptable now, too. We're a fucked up people. <laughs> but yeah, so this didn't really go unnoticed. At many of the cookouts, a number of people told Barjona that the meat had a peculiar taste to it. His response, uh, Barjona's response would often be that he had gone deer hunting and used the deer meat in dishes. However, Barjona did not own a rifle or a hunting license, nor had he ever been hunting at any time. Yeah, uh, like, to be honest, that to me is the creepiest thing ever to like say you're going to like i don't know subway or burger king or something like that and you eat there for ages and ages and ages or maybe not even that like you, you buy like a regular kind of meat from tesco and then you suddenly find out that it's, it's human horse. and that horse is fine <laughs> but like you suddenly find out that they're like like your friend or whatever is cooking you human that's, Man, that's i used like, to always think that, that shit was an urban legend until i started researching this dude yeah i know it's and now i'm like Huh, I did eat meat once that tasted a bit sour and it wasn't gone off. And wow. human meat is supposed to taste apparently a little bit sour. It's supposed wow. to taste a little bit like gone off beef. Yeah. Wow, it's like I saw I saw I saw Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of free tree. I was like, Do you know what? I wanna be like that. Uh. But yeah, so on the back of that, uh, so to one woman that was talking about how the meat tasted a bit of funny, uh Bar Jonah replied that he had personally hunted, killed, butchered and wrapped the meat off the deer. Mm-hmm. He would later be accused of molesting this woman's son. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Click, it's you. Come along to the barbecue. Bring your son. <laughs> Mommy, I don't want to go. Hush now. The meat is weird, but it's tasty. <laughs> no, Mommy, no. No. Hey, you look a lot like Zachary Ramsey. You're a very uh, tasty kid. Mm. Very delicate looking. So, going back to the apartment again. Of course. (laughs) Detectives also found a number of recipes using children's body parts and contemptuous titles such as 
Little boy pot pie, French fried kid, and phrases such as lunch is served on the patio with roasted child. Oh, you know, that's just normal. So we have like beef stroganoff or I don't know. <laughs> Eyeballs Rogi. of an infant, yes. Eyeballs somewhere. of an infant or torso of, of Zachary Ramsey. You know, I, 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 oh, I, when did you go missing again? I, I uh, February 6th, 1990. <laughs> well, let's ask Nathaniel. But it's like, yeah, we all name our recipes a little weird. That doesn't mean anything. I, I, do you think they, they had in brackets? You know, it's like mm. in case of missing, like in case of lack of child meat, substitute with chicken or so. <laughs> well, on the back of that, uh, in the decoded journals, Barjona referenced serving these recipes to neighbors. Also, hair was found inside a meat grinder in his apartment. The hair was tested for DNA. It was found to belong to an African American male but did not belong to Zachary Ramsey. Okay. The DNA of the hair was also different from the child bone fragments found in Barajona's garage, which also, just to remind you, did <laughs> not belong to Zachary. But I, I'm pretty sure I've seen how this all ends. I've seen, I, you know, he's going to be cooked into a pie as well, you know. Yeah, they're going to fray him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, it's not even that. Like, so he has clearly a load of victims that were never identified to him, and he's also suspected of... Um, Amanda Galleon, she went missing in on August 13th, 1997. She was, October 13th. October 13th. Uh, she was a 100-pound, 5'2 girl. She left home on a bicycle, and at 7.15 a.m., she disappeared. Seems to be a very favorite time of kidnapping children is 7.15 Well, think about it this way. It makes sense. The parents yeah. are at work. They're going to school alone. And this is why I believe women should stay in the work, <laughs> out of the workplace. And that's it from us, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Good night, folks. <laughs> But yeah, and she, Barjona at the time, so she went missing in uh, Gillette, and Barjona turned up in Gillette on the 12th, she went missing on the 13th, and he was staying in a small motel on the outskirts of the town, Oh yeah. and was back in Montana uh, by the following night, roughly around the time when Galleon's bicycle was discovered along the side of a road off I-90. Galleon's social security number has not been used since her disappearance, which leads everyone to believe that yeah. she is also dead. It's also that, like, it, it, it notes that she was mistaken for, she looked like a boy in her area. I've looked her up. Like, she does look like just a, a little bit, like a little bit of a tomboy. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. So do you think he, like, he, like, it has a weird fascination with boys? He only killed, well, he only, he only attempted to, to kill girl. that one little girl. Back when he was a kid, yeah. What that kind of makes me think is, like, this is just speculation, because uh, I don't, I can't confirm it, but maybe, maybe he just developed sexually early mm -hmm. and realized that he didn't like girls, and because it was the 60s and that was not particularly okay, especially in the early 60s, he got maybe chastised for it or he's angry about that and he tried to take it out on her because he did he very rarely attacked girls freud calling dr freud calling do <laughs> this guy needs freud freud would back out of the room fucking slowly if he saw nathan he's like what all right the, what are you what do you what, 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 what are you here what, for i want to talk about zachary ramsey what of do, course you do what do you think his problem is doctor he is what i would consider to be a monster <laughs> 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 fucking his own muzzle would be the least of his crimes uh, <laughs> Oh, and on that note, let's let's bring this sordid, horrible God. Why are we doing this show? Let's bring this fucking sick tale to an end. That's it, everybody. That's Nathaniel Barajona. It took him twenty five years to catch him. Longer than twenty five years. It took him longer. It took him thirty five years. Like for God's sake, when you strangle that kid as a child, that should be one. Normally, serial killers start torturing animals. You know, they're bad and they start directly with people. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if they didn't catch this guy. Oh, I don't even know. If they didn't catch him in 99, just imagine... He died in 2008. Yeah. If he had lived to that age on the outside, he could have had... A, another God, decade. fucking another nearly dozen of kids. N another two decades nearly of, of attacking children and getting away with it. And, like, like the, the most frustrating part for me is they kept catching him. Oh, I know. They caught him... Damn near annually, it felt like. Yeah, it seems like he a dozen just kept times. getting away. He was even arrested and imprisoned, and they let him go. On good behavior. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then he got his letter from a probation officer after attacking <laughs> another kid, saying, "Kudos, you well did done. fine." You, you well done. You were you were well behaved. Now don't do it again, you scoundrel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this <laughs> it sucks. Oh God, know. I know. 
Well, ho- ho- hopefully, you know, the, the rest of the people we, we talk about in this show won't be as grisly, but knowing us, they, will. they definitely will be. They will. I don't know what you're bringing to the table, but <laughs> yep, the episodes that I'm bringing to the table, it just keeps staying on this line. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't spoil what we're talking about next uh, episode, but I am glad to say it won't be this fucking awfully disturbing. It'll just be creepy. Yes, uh, shows like this are supposed to start off a little light. Maybe review Human Centipede. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe just ease yourself in with a little bit of fun facts about John Wayne Gacy. No, no, no. Uh, I went for the jugular. I went for the jugular <laughs> right away with this topic. And you know what? I don't regret it. No. Nope. You know what else I don't regret? What? Oh, I got nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing else I won't regret. <laughs> so. But yeah, so in the words of Nathaniel Barajona, Zachary Ramsey went missing on February 6th, 1996. And we will see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.